All right. So everything that you have worked so hard for, for the past two to six or more years, all comes down to this moment of your interview. Okay. You have been, um, Hannah, thank you. Hannah's all about the shout outs. She's awesome. She's a brand champion. We've been working with (laughs) Hannah on a lot of essays. Um, She's doing awesome. Hope you're feeling better. So um, you get to this stage of of getting an interview invite, and it is time to empty the tank and prepare like your entire application rests on this interview because in all actuality, it really does. Okay. So as far as that's concerned, When you get invited to an interview, basically all other factors go out the window. You and the other people that get invited to attend an interview, you can essentially look at each other like you're complete equals and you're starting with a blank slate. Because by being invited to a program interview, that is how a program tells you that they believe that you are worth uh, being reviewed more closely to see if they want you to come into their program. And at this point, it's not so much about your competence as an a- academically, it's more about if you're the right fit for that program. If you're the type of person that's going to be able to conduct themselves like a professional at all times, when you're in the program and when you leave the program, right? Um, and as far as we go with that, I've had applicants who are very conceited. They have really, really high applications, really strong applications, 4.0, perfect GRE scores, 10,000 observation hours. They've done academic research for three years. Like they look perfect on paper. And we work with them on their essays. And I ask them about, well, are you, in, are you curious about interview coaching? Would you like to get some help prepping for your interviews? And they're like, no, my application's great. It's just a formality. I, I don't need to worry about it, right? Then we follow up with them a few months down the road. And we find out that they are either on a wait list or they didn't get accepted into a program. And when that happens, when you are such a strong applicant and you don't get accepted or you are on a wait list, chances are your interview was what hosed you. And if you would have been prepared and you have an applicant, an application that's that strong and you would have knocked your interview out of the park, you can pick your poison. You can pick out of all the DPT programs you get accepted to and you can have options. Okay, we have applicants right now that have a wide variety of options. Um, There was a, a. an email that I posted, one applicant already has two acceptance offers and has 12 interview invites. Um, This individual did not work with us on program selection. So love him. He's doing awesome, but he applied to so many schools and he probably didn't need to to apply to that many. But either way, the principle of the matter is you want to make sure you have options for where you go to physical therapy school. You don't want to just go somewhere because it's the only place that invited you, right? Right. Um, You should apply, every program you apply to should be a place that you'd be happy to go to. But at the end of the day, it's always better to have options than to just be stuck with one route, okay? In addition to that, we've had applicants who have a 3.0. Maybe they uh, they don't have as many observation hours. Maybe they've had family or life experiences that have forced their application to not be as strong up until this point because they just had to survive, right? That's happened frequently, Um, especially during COVID. We had a lot of applicants that really had a tough time and they had to, we had to figure out how to sell them during their interview. But either way, those applicants who are 3.0, we went in, we said, okay, you really have to prepare. Like this is everything that you can prepare. Like this is the only thing in your application that matters. Uh, because the fact that you get an interview invite is awesome and you have to maximize that opportunity and give it everything you've got. So please empty the tank during this time when it's time to prepare for interviews and let's get after it. Okay. Uh, This is, you can pat yourself on the back for two seconds after you get an interview invite and then it's focus. Okay. Until you have six acceptance offers, then you can relax. Okay. But now we've got to treat it like our life depends on it. Um, And you'll thank me later for this. I'm not saying you need to be stressed out all the time, but just prepare. Don't become complacent because you have an interview invite. You are going to be up against the cream of the crop for limited seats. And DPT programs now have the opportunity to interview more applicants than they ever have before because of virtual interviews. Um, and they there's oftentimes larger group interviews where they interview four, five, six applicants at in one 30 to 45 minute period. And so more and more applicants are getting in front of more and more programs and programs can be more picky about who they pick. 
All right. So that is what is on the line when it comes down to this interview. Okay. All right. So this is something that uh, it's been something that's been on my mind for a long time when it comes to interview invites, uh, especially is you have to prepare for the event that you are going to be competing in. Okay. There's a quote right here. It's from Ar- Archaeoclus. I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it, but he is a famous Greek lyric poet and soldier. Um, and he says, we don't rise to the level he said, he is not alive anymore. <laughs> we don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. I love that quote because so many times in business, in different areas, people say, well, those that I'm working with are going to rise to the level of expectations I set for them. They may, but if they're not trained on how to rise to that level of expectation, then they won't rise to it. And um, that includes yourself. So I don't know of an applicant who gets an interview invite who says, oh, I'm going to do bad in this interview. Everyone, usually, most of the time, they're overconfident. They think, oh, I got an interview invite. I'm going to go and I'm going to knock it out of the park. It's going to be a piece of cake, right? That's what most applicants are going to say. Other applicants are going to be very afraid and they're like, oh, I'm going to be against all these other applicants and they're so much better than me. We'll talk more about this, but that's the under and the overconfidence effect, okay? And how both of those can be very damaging to you. Then uh, the next point here is you're not going to show up to the compete in the Olympics without practicing the event that you're competing in, whether it's the high jump, maybe you're doing the 200 meter butterfly, whatever, right? Whatever the event is that you're competing in, you will have done that event over and over and over and over again and practiced it multiple times. You should be doing something similar to prepare for your interviews, okay? If you really want to get serious about getting accepted into PT school, as you should because you've applied, so you should not be applying with the intent to reapply. You should always be applying with the intent to get in your first time. Um, you need to take your interview preparations very seriously, okay? 